So good afternoon, my family and we, they watch me on TV, and we brother and sister there from the first estate, particularly I have recognized Mrs. Asma James, we in our midst also, we in a senior person for the media business. Um, in always good way, people are always senior. They can participate in a press conference because it is show we say really we get the support across the board that the media for what we do. Today we the continue the conversation for bring government program, government activities to una in a language we una they understand, a language we una savvy. And today at the high table, we get distinguished people in. We don't serve, and we are public servants. So we get Mrs. Melrose Committee, where we know that the Minister of Social Welfare, where we can give a general update about the ministry, and we make discuss about Kush, where, in fact, Minister will tell us that the third week in a row, we did find this simply because na issue where people care about, na issue where Boko people want to know what the government they do, and we own job now for connect government to the people through this the platform. I also want to make a welcome me Ella Bora, we now na the Minister for Internal Affairs, we na Major General retired, the Titalova. We will all sabi, we will not say, don't spend boku boku years, don't work in the military, and now he did na internal affairs as minister. Then we get we sister as we can normally do. We also create this platform for make we get society voice for make it We get my colleague, we a lawyer, we a Julius Kai Kai, we a the acting executive director advocate for also come up more on this particular discussion all day. But as we know. I go on over to the minister, when the host, for giving updates and for carrying on with the program for today. I will stop this so far for hand over to the minister. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Minister, members of the press, family, all now, also, thank you for all the journey we gain in this weekly conversation series with the media to the people of Salo. I have to take this opportunity again for tell plenty thank you to all we media partners that we carry with life and we will follow you online. I have to tell you thank you. We don't send you questions then as well in advance. I have to tell you thank you. We will make sure see as usual we reflect that. We know now the pattern we get we will start and they provide for us general updates from across the government of Salo. And after the update today, I hand over to my very distinguished panel over here. They will provide two things. One, they will an update from their respective agency, them. I mean, from the government, because it's not government press conference. And then they talk on this on the topical issue. We will continue for engage on present us for engage on on push. We we'll get the response and the view from internal affairs, the response from social welfare. Then we we'll turn over to a colleague with common civil society. For letting them share in your views, then. So, make us start with some big news this week across the government of Salon. Number one, very important EDSA. EDSA, we are the uh, primary agency we responsible for the distribution of power electricity in the country. Don't write to the Electricity and Water Regulatory Commission. It's an important news. For us, for their government increase tariff from 11 cents to 23 cents. Big breaking news. So the law say, our level is listen. The law say, now ETSA they make this request to the regulator. 
when you make this request to the regulator, we have to go through a process where they include follow announcer. It's already gazettes this, and, and the regulator don't gazette this. We have to get public hearings, media engagements, and conversations on this. You know, means saying that this is the new um, reto. It's not as the regulator say because of inflation, the dollar, prices of commodity, including fuel. The letter very detailed. I know we get chance for read the entire letter. But they make a case say right now, them as an agency and the government, they lost significant resources because we they pay particularly less than all man at the sub-region. In fact, the average at the sub-region, uh, they about between 20 to 25 cents. We now don't pay 11. I will not adjust it for its inflation. So I don't say they don't change you. I say heads are not right. We don't start the process for make let this change here happen. An important news that day, and over the next few days, we will continue for explain this, and we will take the entire civic engagement and public education process for update the public on the steps they really for take. It's a request, not means say that they will go for two. We will go through the process and then we arrive at the conclusion. Another very important news we need to clarify. Plenty, plenty journalists there, local and international, announced following a tweet where we been come off from the Twitter handle of His Excellency the President that Salon they open an embassy like Jerusalem. Indeed, now we issue the tweets. We have to clarify the tweets for the people of Salon and for Una the Press. Salon do enjoy a long-standing relationship with the State of Israel, which dates back to 1960, even before their independence. Salon will continue for build on that relationship there. And not just for build on the relationship, but for all begin for benefits significantly economically. Uh, and otherwise, as part of this exchange. As part of that process, day, His Excellency the President don't ask that we look into for make sure, say, we open um, embassy, Yanda, then said open embassy in Aya. The venue for that embassy, day, you know, means say, you get for being at Jerusalem. So I want to clarify that day one thing. But people that don't that are talking in English, because it's an international news. His Excellency the President has indeed directed that Sierra Leone will open an embassy in the state of Israel. This is consistent with our long-standing partnership and relationship with the state of Israel that dates back to the 1960s. We intend to enhance that relationship to cultivate mutual economic and other benefits. And this is why His Excellency is moving, is taking steps for Sierra Leone to open an embassy in Israel and for Israel to do the same in Sierra Leone. The venue of that particular embassy, you know, means say it doesn't mean that it's going to be in Israel, in, in, uh, in Jerusalem. Sierra Leone continues to support the United Nations position. that seeks a two-state solution in the conflict between Israel and Palestine. So the position of Sierra Leone is consistent with the position of the United Nations and the African Union. That has not changed. So there's been some reporting that we take responsibility for because the tweet misrepresented our position. And we are seeking to clarify that. We encourage you all to join us in that clarification and we will continue to do that. A couple of other breaking news. Madam Musaye Obai, who is an accomplished aviation expert, 
has been appointed Director General Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority. You hear in this here first. Madam Musa Yerobai, she has a well established background in company management, business development, cross cultural awareness for conducting international business. She is a strategic thinker with first hand experience in the Sierra Leone aviation environment, and she is now the Director General for the Sierra Leone Aviation Authority. We want to confirm other appointments that you have seen on social media. <coughs> Mr. Joseph Kaifala is our chairman for the Monuments and Relics Commission. Honorable Alusan Kane is our new Chief Immigration Officer. Honorable Abubakar Karim is Sierra Leone's uh, Ministry of Finance. Then just do the validation, validation workshop for review the state's own enterprise bill. So that process they, they continue. Um, we don't do we don't visit some place them. It didn't have the brief where I get for provide updates on, but I go give yeah, a chance for the do that day for himself. Some of us say the honorable chief minister. The partner, Dr. David Senge, the partner with the Minister for Works, Dr. Dennis Sandy, and then Claire Yubili. And some of them have witnessed that. Clean the place clearly and the lady foundation for a complete transformation of the building. The Honorable Chief Justice, Justice Desmond Babat, signed 23 judge them for presiding over his total case across the country. This time for continuing for push uh, justice um, at the country. And then um, finally, Serion Broadcasting Corporation, SLBC, the Ministry of Finance to approve a salary increase of 50% for staff at the Serion Broadcasting Corporation. It's not another hot breaking news. We get the privilege today. We we'll just we we'll just do a town hall with SLBC, and we announce that to the staff. But we also know say this is a news item, and a part of His Excellency in commitment for continue for improve the welfare of the um, information sector at this country. And SLBC they front and center of that. Mr. Deputy Minister, I don't miss any major news. All right, so as usual, on all of the news then day, we'll open for question and answer when I can feel free for us. And we'll take question. For now, we, we commitment that for do that first party in 15 minutes, so we keep that commitment day. I get the privilege for first handover to the Minister of Internal Affairs. And 